I've been a priest for more than seven years now, and uh, uh, I've celebrated a lot of funeral masses already. And uh, of course, people come to attend a funeral, of course, to honor uh, and also give respect to the person who died, but also to also to give comfort and consolation uh, to the family and friends who are mourning. But whenever I celebrate a, a, a funeral mass or a funeral gathering, I could sense some people are uncomfortable coming to a funeral mass. And maybe it's because they, they, they see the reality of their mortality, that one day they would also die, right? So there's some uncomfortability there. And for some people, maybe many people, they do not know what's after death. When you're buried on the ground, that's it. Some people think it's that way. Some people think, some people believe in reincarnation. When you're a good person, you come to the next life in a better position, okay? If you're a bad person, let's say you talk too much, you come back, you become a parrot. <laughs> or if you have a bad temper, you come back uh, like a lion. I think if, I, if I'm not doing well, I'm going to come back as an Energizer Bunny. <laughs> At least I'm doing commercials for Energizer, right? <laughs> and uh, so, of course, for us Christians, we do not believe in, in reincarnation. For us Christians, we believe that there is something after death, okay? There's this uh, Lutheran author, uh, his name is uh, Amos uh, Traver. He said this, Death is not a period, but a comma in the story of life. If you're writing a sentence, if you use a comma, it means there's more words after that, right? But when you use a period, then there's no more words. It's the end. Period is the end. Death is not a period, but a comma in the story of life. And in our uh, first reading today, we see the story of this mother uh, who has seven sons who were martyred. And for a very long time in the past, I, I was kind of upset reading this story. And I was like thinking to myself, why didn't this mother just ask his seven, her seven sons to eat that damn pork? Right? All, all of us love eating bacon, right? And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's not as if eating a pork is a deadly sin. But it's not about food here. It's about obedience. That's why one after another, the seven sons were willing to give up their life than to disobey God. So many people think that this story is about faithfulness. Yes, it is about faithfulness. But there's more to that. It also talks about the afterlife. The second Maccabees is part of the Deut deuterocanonical books. Uh, but in other Old Testament books, it's not clear what happens after death. They say when you die in the Old Testament, you go to Hades. Okay? When you die, you go to Sheol. It's not clear. But in the second book of Maccabees and also in the, in the book of Wisdom, it's spelled out there that there is life after death, okay? Now, that's why uh, some, some people do not believe in the resurrection, like the Sadducees, right? They do not believe in the resurrection. That's why they're called sad, you see, right? They were sad, you see, because <laughs> that's <laughs> all, all that there is is this life. And many people believe that this life is all itself. Everything is just in this life. There's nothing, okay? But for us, we know that there's life after that. And I, and I remember when, uh, I'm sure you know, my, both my parents uh, passed away uh, last year uh, due to COVID in the Philippines. And it's hard. It's hard to lose one parent. How much more to lose two parents? But me and my siblings, of course, we're sad, but there's such peace. We know in their last two weeks in the hospital there, they were anointed. They, they received the anointing of the sick. They didn't receive physical healing, 
but we truly believe that they receive spiritual healing. In the last two weeks that they were in the hospital, they were surrounded by family. They were surrounded by love. They were surrounded by prayers. In fact, the last hour of their lives, we were able to pray the rosary in the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. That's why when they pass away, yes, there's great sadness, but there's also great peace. Because we believe that there is life after death. We know that they're in a better place. If, if they're not in heaven, we're sure that they're in purgatory. That's why we continue to, 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 pray, for, uh, to pray for them. That's why, for, you know, for us Christians, for us Christians, we are, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Okay? Our ultimate home is not this world. Our ultimate home is heaven. We're just passing through 70, 80, 90, 100 years. We're just passing through in this world, right? That's why, you know, we, we, uh, it's so beautiful that we have this hope of the resurrection. In, uh, in, in that story, this mother of the seven sons said this, I do not know how you came into being in my womb. It was not I who gave you life and breath, nor I who set in order the elements within each of you. Therefore, the creator of the world who shaped the beginning of man and devised the origin of all things will in his mercy give life and breath back to you again. Okay? So we see here, there is life after death. In 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, it says there, if we have died with Christ, we will also live with him. If we endure to the end with Christ, we will also reign with him. Okay? And in our, in our, in, through our baptism, Christians has already died with Christ. In baptism, we become dead to sin. Okay? Sacramentally. Okay? Sacramentally, we've been dead to sin. In order for us to receive the graces in order to live this new life. And that's what we receive, the graces, the power to be faithful, to be faithful to the very end. So that when we die in the grace of Christ, which is in the state of grace, we will be joining in his death. And as we join in his death, we will also join in his resurrection. Okay? And uh, so it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, for us. Uh, for, for, for those who would be attending funeral, uh, a funeral mass, pay attention to the preface of the mass for the dead. Okay? It says there, Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. You notice that? Death is not a period. It's a comma. Okay? When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. Okay? So as I said, we're just passing through in this world. Our ultimate home is heaven. Okay? That's why we need to prepare ourselves for the hour of our death. Let's pray that, you know, we, we, we will not be uh, experience a sudden and unforeseen death, that we will not be, be prepared. That's why... You know, it's always good to, to turn to Mary, especially when we pray the Hail Mary. When we pray the Hail Mary, what does it say? Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Okay? And because we really don't know. We really don't know when we will die, where we will die, how we will die. I, I could go out there and get hit by a car and... Father Ken is gone. And, and, I, and I hope I'm prepared, so please pray for me. <laughs> right? Uh, and another person that we could turn to is St. Joseph. Because St. Because Joseph is the patron of the happy death. St. Joseph died in the arms of Jesus and Mary. And I hope the last prayer, the last prayer that even we could say 
are their names Jesus, Mary, Joseph. That when we die, we die in their arms. It's a beautiful thing. Another way also to prepare uh, ourselves is to go regularly to confession. Once a month, go to confession because in confession, it's not just our sins are being forgiven, okay? We're also receiving the grace, the power to be able to, 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 be, to be faithful to the Lord to the very end. That's why I really encourage you to go uh, to confession. In the Imitation of Christ, this very, very beautiful uh, uh, Christian book, it says there, every action of yours, every thought should be those of one who expects to die before the day is out. Death would have no great terrors for you if you had a quiet conscience. Why not keep clear of sin instead of running away from death? Okay? If, 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 if our conscience is clear, there's no, there, there, there's no fear of death. We don't need to run away from death. Okay? It says here, it says there, if you aren't fit to face death today, it's very unlikely you will be tomorrow. I'll repeat that again, the last sentence. If you aren't fit to face death today, it's very unlikely you will be tomorrow. Okay? So let's, let's take this day as if this is our last. Eat, drink, and be merry. No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's ask. Let's ask the Lord for that grace so that we will be faithful to the end. My, my favorite scripture passage is uh, in Wisdom chapter 3. It, it just uh, uh, reaffirms to me that there is life after death. Can, can we just uh, say this together? The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They are in peace. Okay? So we see here the righteous souls, souls who are righteous. Righteous doesn't mean sinless. Righteous means we're in a re right relationship with God, that even if, when we sin, we repent at once, okay? And reconcile ourselves to God and to others. That's what righteous means. So strive for that righteousness. Strive for that relationship with God. And when we're in the hands of God, no torment of hell shall touch them. They are in peace. And that's what we're going to experience. Eternal peace, eternal joy, eternal life in heaven. Remember, death is not a period. Death is a comma in the story of life. And we, ask, we need to ask the Lord for that grace so that we will be faithful to the very end, so that when we die with Him, we would also rise with Him. Mm -hmm.